Hi, uh, we're here today uh, with uh, the oldest uh, high school graduate in New Jersey, and I'm going to dare say in the United States, Vito Trous. Hi, Vito. How are Hi, you? Hi, okay. So, uh, Vito, uh, tell us a little bit of the story about uh, you just got into your diploma after leaving, um, you dropped out of the high school to join the war. Tell right. us why, you, why you went to why you joined the Army in 1945. Okay, in 1945, I went to East Stratford High School. And, uh, and what happened, I went to the, I was going to high school and I asked it, and I got, uh, 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 I was gonna go into the service, right? And they, could, they told me to go. And I went to the principal and told him that I, I'm gonna go into the service. So he says to me, well, you could either stay in the service, go to the service, or, graduated is to stay in school so I said I'd rather go to in the service because my brother went my other brother my neighbors all went and I just turned 18 so I said I'm going to go and that's what happened and I understand while you're uh, fighting overseas you were captured and you were a POW yeah when I when I was overseas I landed first in Africa mountain training then after a while I went to Naples I landed in Naples and then I fought up the coast of Anzio and Monte Cassino and I was on the front lines about for five to six months. Then we moved over to Florence. And from Florence, we went up in the mountains in Italy, and I was a scout, and I was captured by the Germans. Me and another guy, we were scouts, and the rest of the guys got, you know, in the back, got, you know. So how long were you POW? I was less than a year. It's about eight months or something like that. I was captured on, uh, uh, September 24th, and I, and I got liberated May 2nd. May 2nd, I got liberated by the Americans, and I was in a, a Stalag 7A in Munich, outside of Munich. And uh, you were just, we were just having a conversation, and your name is obviously uh, Vito, but you were a little afraid when you were in, pri in prison that they were beating up the, uh, the oh, people no, in. Oh, no, I'll tell you the story about okay. that one. My name is Vito. Well, when I, when I got captured by the Germans, I was in a prison camp, and there was the Italians, they were beating up a couple of Italian guys, and the guy said, they're beating them up. Now, I've just turned 19 years old, and I was afraid. I, I, I don't know what the hell's going on. I don't know what's going on. So what happened? I said to the guys, listen, my name is Al. So I changed my name to Al. Now, when they would call me out, then all of a sudden, the day later, they said, we're going to give you a number that we had to say it in German. Einhundert nine hundred nine and dreißig zwei hundred siebzehn one thirty nine two hundred and seventeen. That was my number. When we went on work details, when I worked in Munich and that, they used to ask me number. And if you didn't give the right number, you were missing. They would the SS troops would go look for you. Well, twice. I was working, they didn't know where I was and everything. I got beat up twice because of, because of their number. And, I was, and I'm was, and i only 19 years old. I don't know what the heck's going on. And well, I lived through it and that's it. So that would have been your uh, your senior year in high school. I would have been senior year. Well, I wasn't that great in high school. I mean, I had an education, but I, I played a lot of sports in high school. And uh, like I say, when I was going to school there, I played on the football team, and, and uh, we played five games because I played on the fifth game, and uh, we played Lynnhurst, and I scored a touchdown there, but we scored four out of five games when, before I left. So I played on the Saturday, on the Thursday, I went to the service. Wow. Yeah, it, it, everything happened quick. And, and then what happened, I had base, I went into basic training, I had all this stuff, I went over to Africa, to, to practice going up the mountains. And then what happened, I was 18 years old, I was in the front lines. I got captured when I was just 19. So I, I had, a, a, when I fought, it was, it was in when I was 18 years old. Wow. And then I got captured when I was 19. So, uh, and then when did you come back to the United States? Well, listen to me carefully. I, I'm, I'll always listen to you carefully. Don't worry about now, that. This is a story. I got liberated. It was on a Sunday on uh, May 2nd. And uh, we were in a big farmhouse. And we wrote POW on the roof. 
and the English planes used to fly over and tell them back that we, there were prisoners there. So we, they, the Germans had a tank alarm and they had an air raid alarm. We knew the tanks were coming because of the, the sound of the, the, you know, bugle, all that stuff. And what happened on a Sunday morning, about 20 tanks, American tanks were on a ridge and we were like in a valley and they all came down and they, when we, when we got, they got there, they asked us who treated you bad. And the guys, when the Germans took off and they gave us regular soldiers, the elderly guys, and they didn't do it, no harm to us. And we said all these guys, guards were good. So what happened? We took all our clothes off, they, they cut my hair, they did everything. And then we stood there for about uh, one day. And the next day, we got Harley Davidson motorcycles, uh, four guys with the sidecar, mm -hmm. two in each one. And what happened, we, we went from, from uh, outside of uh, the prison camp, of Stalag 7 near Munich, we went to Paris, France. It took us six days to get up there. And when we got there, the war ended on May 2nd, and we had a big party with the French people. Wow. Yeah. I, so then, then you shortly came back home? Well, then I was, I was uh, in Munich, I was in Paris for two weeks and I had to get out of there. And I got out of Paris, went to La Havre, France, got on a ship and got home. I was home for 60 days and I had a great party. And the, the people in World War II respected all, all servicemen. It was great. And so you never went back to school though when you came back? No, wait. <laughs> I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. I'll tell you, when I was going to come back, I am going to get an education. I wasn't that smart, let's get it straight. And what happened, I said, well, let me, the army give me everything. They said, you could go to school, this, that. So what happened, I go to class. The first day they give me 40 pages to read. How the heck could I read 40 pages, right? So I said, the heck with it. But you know what? Listen to me carefully. Education is the greatest thing because I lost my education. When I went for a job, I couldn't get a job. I couldn't be a milkman, a policeman, or nothing because you have to have a, a, a high school education. I never had it. What do you think I did? I had to go out and look for a job. And I worked all my life and I worked uh, two jobs. I worked 20 years. I worked the Magnavox in East Rutherford Syringe. I worked 20 years from morning to night, but I'm going to tell you something. Without an education, I, wouldn't, I, I, I would have been better off, but I worked like anything, and that's what happened. So uh, we're going to fast forward like to 2018. You just received your diploma, but you went to talk to the students. Uh, oh, the principal asked you. Well, to uh, let me tell you something. I have a wonderful prince. The principal from Beckton High School is great. Because this would have never happened because I never thought about it, you know. But he came over to me and he got, he called me up and everything like that. And he asked me to come down to see the, the kids from the graduating from uh, 18, uh, 2018. I said, of course. And I, when I go and people ask me to go to school, I mean to talk, I gladly do. And the reason why I go to talk there it's for Memorial Day. That's the most sacred day for me, mm -hmm. and it should be for the whole world. Because without education, you lose your freedom. And, and, and you got to have somebody to back you up. But when I went over there, the old students were in the auditorium. I got up there, I, they asked questions, you know, I was introduced, and I think it was the greatest thing that happened. And all the kids, you couldn't hear a pin drop. They all listened. They, after the thing, they all came up, took, took a picture with me, each one of them, and they and uh, and, and it, would, it was great. It was great, and I thought it was good that the principal from Beckton High School thought of this. And so, when you got to the graduation, did you know that you were going to? No, I I don't know what I was going to do. They just told me. Well, let me tell you something. They come over. They they told us what time to go. My daughter and, I, and my friends. For my daughter's girlfriends and my two daughters, we rode down there. 
they had a guy waiting for us, they had a parking space for us. Then when I got out of there, uh, well, I brought my walker, they, they gave, rode me in a, a, a golf cart. Right. They drove me, they waited for me to get, park my car, got on the golf cart, they drove me to the thing there. And I sat with some girls behind me. And I said, holy oh, gee, you students? They said, no, oh, we're teachers. Oh, uh, <laughs> they were so young, I thought they were there. They were students. And East Shortford has young uh, thing. And w let me tell you something. Years ago, when I went to high school, we had elderly teachers. Well, they might have looked a little older. No, they were elderly. <laughs> they were first. I know, because I was young. Now I go over here and I look at these girls. I think that's, you know, they're, they're, they're students. Students, but they weren't. They were teachers. And, and then they, they sat me down there. And then I, I don't know what was going on. Then, what I liked about the, what the, uh, our um, the principal did, he got 12 soldiers there. Yes, I saw that. I was there right, right, listen to me. I'm very proud of those guys because the, I look like a bum. Well, because I don't know what to wear or anything like that. But these guys, they were all dressed up, had their medals on. And one thing I noticed is combat infantry badge. Now, there's a thing that people don't know what a combat infantry badge is. Yeah, if you wear it, they, they know it. And, and that, those guys, they treated me great. And I congratulate them. And I want to thank the, the, uh, the servicemen from Carlson East Strutterford also. They were there. They backed me up a lot of times. East Strutterford called. I, I know where I came from, and they, they know that too. And, I, and anything for Carlson or East Strutterford, I would give my life for it. And I, and I appreciate the guys that were there from the service. And uh, I, I was at the graduation, and it, I think you were really touched and thankful when they gave you your award. Well, uh, let, let me say, uh, I'm a guy that, that you know, I, I look this way, everything like that, but I got my feelings like everybody else. And it touched me, and I had tears in my eyes. And the reason for that is there, there's these people that come to see me there and, and the, the graduation class and, and the kids were very good to me and the soldiers were good to me. I thought it was great and the principal did a great job. I have to say that. Yes, I know he did a lot of research and that they got the approval of the superintendent and the board and the Department of Ed to I give mean, you a degree. I, now I, I think you can get another I, job. I got, you know, let me tell you something. When I, when I was watching, they gave, gave me all the stuff. They gave me trophies. I don't know what they call them. Things around your neck with medals. Medals, right. But on, when I walked about five or six times, they were so heavy, I had to take them off. They were too heavy. <laughs> I can't pick up too much weight. <laughs> so, and I'll, I'll probably close on this one a little bit. Uh, I was also struck by how respectful the students were. Very you. good. They were chanting USA, they oh, were cheering yeah. you. Yeah. Listen. Uh, I, I think what you did in that presentation to them, yeah. it really did touch them. They well, really did listen. It there was a, there they was weren't a, going through the motions. There, uh, there was an article about two guys who joined it up. And uh, to this day, maybe it's going to happen one of these days before I'm gone. They should have kids that graduate high school spend at least a half a year or a year in, in service. In case there's a war, you're ready to go. Now, if some guys come out at 18 years old. Like when I came out, I didn't even know what a gun was. Right? And I had to learn how to fire rifle and all that stuff. Today they should do that because this country needs a lot of help. And remember one thing, the reason why I'm talking here, I talk in schools, colleges and that, is because Memorial Day. To me, Fourth of July don't mean anything, the other holidays don't mean anything, but Memorial Day is the most sacred day. Guys, I gave their life so we could have the freedom that we have today. I lost my freedom, and freedom, people don't know what freedom is all about. They could go down a, down a bagel store and stuff like that. I could go, and, uh, and I go every morning to the bagel store in Washington Township. That's my hangout. If anybody <laughs> wants to come down there and buy bagels, I'll eat them. <laughs> <laughs> but you, your message is very important, Ed. Remember that? Yeah, Memorial, Memorial Day. Day. You don't know what freedom is until you lose it, yeah. like you did. Now, you work for the Board of Education, whatever it is, yeah. and I think this is great because how are people going to know about Memorial Day? They, 
people, our own people, don't even come to Memorial Day thing. They should give their ten, only be at 11 o'clock in the morning for five minutes to have the ceremony. Then you can do whatever you want. But respect the guy. Well, they should be, everybody should go down to the parade. If You don't need a parade. You just need the day to remember the guys that gave their life so we could have the freedom we got today. Okay, well, I'd like okay. to thank you for it's this a, conversation. A, Vito Trails. <laughs> He's uh, my the, pal. <laughs> <laughs> the newest graduate from uh, Beckton High School.